what's going on everyone welcome back to the channel my name is savannah if you're new here thank you so much for joining us today we are in planet zoo but not in any specific zoo project that i have going on right now we're actually doing something a bit special so for those of you that picked up the recent southeast asia animal pack um, when that pack was being announced, I was fortunate enough to be given early access by Frontier so that I could get in into the game and play with all the new animals and things like that. But I was also lucky enough uh, to be asked to build a habitat for Frontier to show off on their Twitch stream on launch day. So that's what this habitat is. This is a Malayan tapir habitat that I built specifically for Frontier so that they could show it off. Um, they wanted to specifically show off all the animals. So myself and eight other amazing content creators were chosen and uh, this is what I came up with. So this is not part of any zoo, not Sakura Zoo or Hakea or River Rock. Um, it's just a one-off build. I'm going to be putting it up on the workshop for you guys so there should be a link down below to the Steam workshop um, because more than happy to put that up there for you guys to play around with this. Um, it'll be a good starting point for a zoo if you're looking for something to start a new project. Uh, the way the paths are the path kind of goes off in two different directions so it's a good branching point and I built it far enough away from the entrance so that if you wanted to build an entrance you still have a little bit of room. But essentially my idea behind this was with it being a Southeast Asia pack I did actually go back and forth quite a bit on if I should do something Southeast Asia themed like really heavily stylized like using all of the East Asia pieces. You can see here I'm kind of going through and and looking at a, a couple different options and I, I I end up falling on something that's not really Southeast Asia themed, uh, but more just my th theme, I guess, my aesthetic, what I like to see. Um, I, like I said, I went back and forth and I eventually decided just to do something that I enjoy. Um, I don't know, because I, I was having fun building it and I really, I wasn't sure what other creators were going to make. I, I didn't want everything to be super heavily Southeast Asia themed. And I also wanted to show you guys that even though these animals come from certain regions, you know, zoos kind of have hinting theming here and there sometimes, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're just habitats that look like their natural habitat in the wild. So basically starting off here with a little kind of bridge boardwalk, uh, area. I, I knew right off the bat that I wanted the habitat to have waterfalls. I wanted it to be sunken down and I was using a reference picture of like a circular uh, courtyard area. It's not even really uh, from a zoo. It was just kind of a circular courtyard with these raised platforms that kind of walked through. And that was my that was my only reference picture that I used. Um, other than that, just kind of modern architecture and and modern modern build pieces. You guys know how much I love to build in a modern aesthetic, and so that's kind of what I just ran with. I did end up bringing in like lots of bamboo and lots of tropical feeling stuff to make it feel more like it's meant to be in like a Southeast Asia area or more like it's themed to what the tapirs would normally want. But other than that, yeah, just just normal uh, aesthetic. So I'm very, very happy with how this one came out. It actually took me a really long time. And so you'll notice like at the beginning of the video, we didn't start with an open blank green map. And that's because I cut out a lot of my first initial uh, attempts, which normally I don't do. However, when I was uh, putting this video together, when I just took all of the raw footage itself, it was like 50 minutes long sped up. And I didn't want to speed it up like a thousand times times or 900 times for you guys because then it would just be too fast and it started to you know give me motion sickness didn't want to give you guys motion sickness <laughs> so I ended up slowing it down <clears throat> excuse me slowing it down and cutting out some of that stuff that I would normally uh leave in uh otherwise so I hope that's okay with you guys but like I said I didn't want it to be a 50 minute episode um, and I didn't want to have to speed it up to like a thousand times just to make it a 30 minute episode. Um, so even, even still now, this is going to be a little bit longer of a speed build. So I hope you guys do enjoy and let me know, how are you guys liking the Southeast uh, Asian animal pack? such a mouthful, Southeast Asia Animal Pack. Um, I know it's been out for a while and I do apologize because I totally dropped the ball on forgetting this habitat. I wanted to release it like a few days after the pack got launched, but then I started building for all the other animals. I got excited about other projects and it literally just 
left my mind. It just escaped my brain, never to come back until, you know, obviously now it's come back. <laughs> but I, I didn't remember it at all until one day I was going through my save files and I was like, oh, Oh my gosh, I built an entire habitat and I recorded it and I have it and I've done nothing with it. Um, I'm actually at the point now that I I do have quite a few projects that are, are built, filmed, ready to go. I just need to talk about them. Um, for me, doing the voiceovers is the most time consuming part. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. It's not the most time consuming part. It's just the most um, like energy needing part. Is that is that a correct sentence? I, I can sit down and I can kind of mindlessly build for hours and have fun and, you know, be happy with what comes, comes of it. But I, I need to be in the right mindset to do a voiceover, to talk to you guys and talk about the builds that I'm doing. Um, so if that makes any sense at all, that's kind of why I've put off some of the voiceovers as of recently. Um, mostly just because life has been really busy. And so all the spare time that I've had, I've kind of just wanted to mentally relax and chill and play games. So that has led me to have lots of builds done, but not lots of builds talked about, kind of all wrapped up nice and neatly in a bow. Um, it's not a bad position to be in. I'm actually grateful that I have a few videos kind of like in the works ready to go out because that's not a normal for me. Um, but now I also need to sit down and talk a whole heck of a ton uh, to get these all done for you guys. Um, and in fact, even now I'm sitting here talking, I'm directly after our stream. It's currently um, Sunday. We just had the most amazing stream and I'm gonna say it one more time. Thank you guys so much for the support. I'm having so much fun streaming on Sundays for you guys. I'm, I'm actually really happy that I increased it from every other Sunday to every Sunday now. Um, however, I will let you guys know if you're watching this now when it does go live next Sunday is the 25th, uh, the 25th of April. And I unfortunately won't be streaming. I do have to work that day, but hopefully I will, um, I'll be able to stream either Monday or Tuesday or something like that. So that next week we still get a stream in because we started a new habitat in Sakura and I'm really excited about it. Um, but I do unfortunately have to work. So, um, other than that, we do normally stream every single Sunday at 8 AM Pacific standard time because I'm in San Diego. So I wake up nice and early for you guys. And, uh, that way the majority of the world can hang out and chit chat with me. So so if you're ever wanting to hang out and chat or have questions, I'm always happy to answer questions or help people figure out problems in Planet Zoo or whatever we're playing. So stop by because the streams are the streams are pretty exciting. Um, but moving on here to the raised platform. So making this railing, I saw a reference picture that had like the railing supports kind of hang over the edge. And I thought that that was a really cool detail. So they don't just like come up from the ground, right? They kind of hang over the edge and it just adds a little bit more interest to the side. And then of course using, these are probably my favorite roof pieces, um, but I wanted it just to be like a really simple slanted, like not a building, but just a covered shelter covered shaded space rather. And so that's kind of where I went with this. The space is a bit big and generally, excuse me, generally when I'm building things like this and um, putting things together, I try to make, I try to keep scale in mind, which is, is really difficult in Planet Zoo. I will say like just this morning when we were building, I was building a habitat for um, gorillas and mandrills and was thinking in my head, like, this is an appropriate size. Maybe it might be even a little bit too small. And then we put the monkeys in and they were like microscopic compared to what I built. Because if you don't have like a staff member or an animal next to what you're doing, things get uh, disproportioned really quickly. So I will say with that viewing platform, I struggled with detailing it because it was such a large space. And that's kind of the point of my whole little tangent right there is that smaller spaces are easier to detail. Smaller spaces are easier to make look nice. And so in general, I do try to keep things on the smaller side. However, it didn't work with that specific viewing area. <laughs> so, um, so it does end up looking a little bit plain. I put some um, benches and some custom things, uh, custom signs in there just to kind of add some education. This is the first ever custom billboard that I ever made. And I do believe that I uploaded those images on my discord. So if you're interested in, in getting some Malayan tapir custom, um, education signs, they are on the discord for you guys to download everything that I've made. I've put on the discord so far, that way you guys are more than welcome to use it. But yeah, I've, I've been having a lot of fun making custom, uh, custom education boards. <laughs> 
words totally escape my mind. I'm a bit hungry. I, <laughs> I haven't eaten breakfast yet and it's uh, like 11 a.m. So my tummy, tummy is grumbling, but I ordered something and it's not here yet. So I figured I might as well just sit down and do some talking before I feed myself. Um, so apologies if I'm stumbling over my words or my words are escaping me. Um, but anyway, having a lot of fun making custom education because then I can actually put real facts on the education board. So I've kind of just copy and pasted. I haven't written my own facts, but copy and pasted from like San Diego Zoo, the Denver Zoo, Animal Diversity Web, wherever I kind of go to look for information, um, I have uh, just kind of copy and pasted that over onto some custom bulletin boards, uh, custom um, education signs for the animals. Now here, what we're starting on is a little restaurant. Um, I was looking at the habitat and thinking like it needed something over on this corner to kind of balance it out. And originally I was just gonna do a bunch of rock work when I was sitting down and deciding to put the waterfall in that corner. I was thinking like, you know, I'll just put, I'll put a bunch of rocks, you know, it'll be rocks, it'll be foliage, it'll be really tropical. it will be kind of a visual barrier. Cause what I wanted is when you come in from the entrance from the front of the habitat is to have to kind of walk around something in order to go see the animals. Um, but then as I thought about it, I was like, you know what? No, I, I want to do, I want to do something special. And this is really what took me so long. Um, so I do a couple Couple iterations of this little restaurant area and I do cut some of those out um, specifically with the roof I try a couple different roofing options um, but I did cut those out because like I said in the beginning of the video the video was incredibly long but architecture takes me a while. I can sit down and build a really nice natural looking habitat fairly quickly, but when it comes to buildings and architecture and the guests stuff, I really need to look at reference pictures very heavily on um, and take my time and go back and fix things. So that's really the bulk of what took me a really long time with this build is the fact that I wanted to build this little restaurant. And even still, like I didn't do any sort of interior for it. This glass section Section that you're seeing, I do throw a couple um, tables inside to make it look like guests can sit inside. They're not usable. There's no path underneath this restaurant, so the guests don't interact with it at all. Um, but I don't do any sort of interior. Um, one, I really dislike interiors. <laughs> don't like interiors at all. Um, but two, just because, you know, with, with a sandbox zoo, especially like I'm probably not going to go back into this zoo unless I decide to make it a full on project. Let me know what you guys think. Cause I'm trying to wrap up river rock zoo right now and start a whole new zoo. And I like the aesthetic of this one. So if you guys are, if you guys are liking it and want to see it turned into a whole zoo project, let me know. I won't make any promises, um, because I'm still kind of deciding what I want to do, but I I'd be, uh, interested to hear what you guys think. But anyway, other than, you know, building in a sandbox zoo, I'm not not really going to ever look inside, you know, it would just basically be for the video. And I really didn't feel like spending that much time, uh, considering the time I already spent doing the rest of the build. So that's why there's not really any interior, but I do make some, some benches, uh, or some tables and chairs rather. And then I use, oh, I think it's a Haribo menu you guys will recognize it because people have used it all over the place because it's absolutely phenomenal um i used it and then i realized we can do custom billboards and menus but i really like the time and effort that went into this this menu the burger lounge menu um is is got to be a lot and so i ended up using it anyway still even though i realized that i could uh reduce the piece count pretty heavily and use a billboard i, I just like the menu with all the art shapes and things like that so I end up using that at the very front, you know, cause if you go places um, like theme parks and stuff, they'll oftentimes have the menu outside so that you can kind of decide before you walk in, if it's somewhere you want to eat. Um, I'm thinking specifically of Disneyland, all of the, all the Disneyland hotels or Disneyland hotels, all the Disneyland restaurants have the uh, menus outside so that you can kind of see what you're going to eat uh, before you actually go there. Um, so that was kind of the thought process is putting the menu right outside so that people can kind of see what they offer. And then I ended up, um, thank you, Estan, cause he's the one that came up with the name for me, um, the tap house because it's next to the tapirs. So it's called the tap house. So the idea was that it's just, you know, some, some beverages, some adult beverages. Cause you know, when you're running around with kids at the zoo, sometimes mommy and daddy need, uh, need a little bit of a drink. Uh, but anyway, you can hang out there, have a drink, quick bites, like not, not a full sit down restaurant 
restaurant, more like appetizers, things like that. Uh, so you can just grab, grab a quick bite to eat and uh, continue on walking through the zoo. So that was kind of the idea behind that. And I thought the name fits super, super well, uh, calling it the Tap House. I can't believe I never come up with things like that. I am so not creative when it comes to naming things or catchy slogans or anything like that. And that's actually part of the story behind the name of the channel. Uh, I went back and forth on what, what the heck to call it. And I was like, you know what? It doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to be, uh, you know, some new fangled original idea. You know what? I'm just simply Savannah. That's just what it is. And so that's actually the story behind the channel name as well. I don't know if I've ever said that before, um, but I just decided, you know what? No, we're going to keep things simple. We're going to keep them basic. You know, this is a, a chill, relaxed, no clickbait kind of content channel. Um, and so that's the story behind the name of the channel. That was a bit of a tangent, apologies. <laughs> so anyway, just finishing up the tap house here uh, with some foliage, with some planted, uh, planters rather, um, just to give it a bit of greenery again. I wanted the whole area to look very, very tropical, um, very lush, very green, because with the Malayan tapirs being a tropical species, I kind of wanted it to fit within that. So using lots of bamboo, and I actually really like the bamboo as a foliage piece. Uh, it's just a really good filler. I like the color of it. Some of the foliage, I get real picky. Uh, you know, I think like, oh, it's too green. It's not green enough. It's a weird color. Like those tamarind trees, for example. The tamarind trees, I love. The ones with the orange flowers are the ones I'm talking about. I love those trees. I love the look of them, but something about the color green, sometimes it's just off to me. Like when I try to put them down with other foliage, it just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't mesh right. It doesn't look right. So that's what I mean is sometimes I can be picky with foliage. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and let's talk about our little tapir friends uh, for a little bit because I think they're such interesting animals. I think all animals are interesting, but the tapir specifically are pretty interesting. So they do have a, a, a few interesting adaptations. And first and foremost is their prehensile snout. So I'm sure you've noticed they have a funny looking nose. Um, the information that I'm getting here is from the Denver Zoo. So if you want to look it up, you can look up uh, on the Denver Zoo website. They have some information about, uh, about the Malayan tapirs. But anyway, the tapirs upper lip and nose are elongated to form a distinctive prehensile snout that is similar to a stubby elephant's trunk. <laughs> <laughs> and I find that comparison super funny. This flexible extended nose is used for plucking leaves and shoots from trees, as well as sniffing their way along the floor forest trails. They have an excellent sense of smell and rely on scents for communication. Urine spraying is used to mark well-used pathways between feeding areas and water sources. So it's kind of got like a twofold use, right? So prehensile in that they can use it to grab leaves, grab shoots, grab grass, whatever they're eating. They are herbivores, so they're going to eat all plant material, um, but then also uh, enhances their, their sense of smell, right? So they're able to detect a little sense of smell. And like it said, they're using um, like chemical signaling, like urine and, and stuff like that to kind of scent where certain areas are, where feeding is, where uh, water sources are. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, that one's a pretty obvious one. Um, the barrel shaped body is another one that they list here. And it says that tapirs have a thick, heavy barrel, heavy barrel shaped body, ideal for crashing through dense forest vegetation. When frightened or threatened, tapirs can run quickly. Despite their large size, they climb steep slopes on the banks of rivers. They are excellent swimmers and spend a lot of time in the water. So it just sounds like their body helps them uh, both with running through the forest, kind of pushing things aside, but then also maybe with buoyancy, it sounds like, because they are excellent swimmers and spend a lot of time in the water. Um, so that's another adaptation that they have. And then of course they're black and white. Um, I was laughing on the frontier stream. People were saying that the Malayan tapirs look like their leggings are falling off their butt. Um, because they do the little, the little black, uh, the black markings on their legs look like their leggings aren't staying on quite right. Um, it's incredibly inaccurate, uh, uh, description of what, what their markings look like, but there's a purpose. So Malayan tapirs are sometimes called Oreo tapirs because of their distinctive black and white color pattern resembles an Oreo cookie. The black on the front and the back with the white or gray in the middle is a form of camouflage that breaks up the tapirs outline in the shadows of the forest. The stripes and spots on the vulnerable base 
babies help them blend into the dappled sunlight and leaf shadows of the forest and protects them from predators. So this is a really common form of camouflage. Um, so like uh, other animals like zebras, right? You might uh, think like, why are zebras black and white and striped all over? They stand out in the grasslands and it's because they're herd animals. So zebras specifically stand in herds and the black and white stripes make it difficult for predators to distinguish between one zebra and another and it makes it really hard for them to kind of narrow in on a specific zebra to hunt so that's kind of the purpose of their camouflage um same kind of thing but just not with uh they're not necessarily gonna be in in huge large herds but breaking up their their body form in the forest and then if you are in a tropical forest and look at the ground the sunlight comes through in in little dappled patterns which is why the babies have all those little spots helps them blend in they're a bit darker because they're lower to the ground right so you think they're going to be like you know in the dirt and stuff like that so that's where that's where their camouflage comes from so all pretty interesting yeah three different uh three different adaptations for them like i mentioned they are herbivores so um this uh uh, website actually says as a vegetarian and I have a problem with that because if you guys don't know the difference between a vegetarian and an herbivore is choice so people can be vegetarians people as hard as they try will never be herbivores because we can can digest meat we are we are capable of digesting animal material and therefore we're vegetarians because uh, or i'm sorry people that choose to eat only plant material are considered vegetarians because it's a choice it doesn't take away their ability to uh, digest meat however uh, animals that can only eat plant material they are not capable their body will not digest uh, animal material are considered herbivores. So with these guys, they are going to be herbivores because they eat only um, uh, leaves, shoots, plants, all that kind of stuff. Soft twigs, fruits, low growing shrubs is everything that it lists on here. Um, so they are considered herbivores. It does also list, which I think is pretty cool at the zoo. They eat grain, alfalfa, apples, banana, carrots, sweet potatoes, and monkey chow. <laughs> so I think that's pretty cool that they let you know exactly what they, uh, they eat in the zoo. Um, and then it lists tigers and humans uh, are the main predators of Malayan tapirs, which makes sense, right? Because the tigers live in the forest too. And then just a few quick fun facts. Um, the tapir's flexible nose can be used as a snorkel. Tapirs communicate with high-pitched squeaks and whistles, which they do in the game. I find it incredibly cute uh, that they do have their squeaks and whistles in the game. So if you listen closely, you'll be able to hear it. Uh, the Malayan tapir is the largest of the four species of tapir and the only species in Asia. Tapirs have poor eyesight, but good hearing and a sense of smell. And if you think about that, that's again because they're gonna be a forest animal. Having incredible eyesight does you no good if all these trees and plants are in the way. Um, if you're out in an open plain, yeah, sure, having some good eyesight to see far away and see what's coming might be beneficial. But in a forest where things can just hide behind bushes and trees and plants and things, being able to smell them or hear them is much more beneficial than being able to see them because you're likely going to be able to smell and, and hear them before you're even able to see them. Um, so that makes a lot of sense as to why uh, why they they have those adaptations. Uh, and then as far as conservation status goes, they are endangered. Um, it doesn't say, oh, it does. Uh, the biggest threat to tapirs is habitat loss due to land clearance for human settlement and agriculture, uh, clear cutting for lumber and flooding by uh, hydroelectric dam projects also pose threats to the tapirs. In some areas, they're hunted for food and for the live animal trade. But I would have guessed that habitat uh, deforestation and habitat destruction were gonna be the main ones for tapirs. A lot of forest animals rainforest animals uh, are suffering because of that because of habitat destruction and and fragmentation and and all that kind of stuff so so that is the malayan tapir i i do i really absolutely love these little guys um i was excited to get them it doesn't bother me in the least that we already had a tapir um species in the game uh, I, I love having varieties because then you can do things like making a little tapir section. You can put the, the Beard's tapir and the Malayan tapir together and, you know, they are a different, different color, different thing to build for. So I really enjoyed having them in game. Anyway, back to the build here. So we are just finishing up. Let me see. Let me, let me catch up and see 
where we're at. Oh, we're working on the backstage area. So the backstage area for the um, the enclosure is technically underground, but it kind of made it, it, you're gonna leave a lot to your imagination on how this building is construction in, constructed inside. So the keepers will go in, they'll go down some stairs and then get to the uh, enclosure. But I've said it and I'll say it again, I don't like doing interiors. I really don't like doing interior builds because I never see them, first of all, after I'm done building them, I never go down and look at them anymore. But two, uh, they're just they're just detailed and a pain. It's just not my favorite. So um, I kind of left that up to the imagination on how the keepers actually do get down there. Um, but doing a little backstage area out the back with some, some props and things like that to make it look like that's where the keepers would actually be. But yeah, just finishing that up, lots more, lots more rocks. We love our, we love our flexi colored rocks. <laughs> we love our foliage and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's really what I finish up here. Um, there is about 10 more minutes in the speed build and um, my food just got delivered. So I'm sorry to leave you guys, but I'm gonna leave you guys with the rest of the speed build as we just kind of finish up everything. Um, please let me know what you think. Let me know what animal from the Southeast Asia pack was your favorite. I kind of already have a sense that the clouded leopard was a uh, crowd favorite along with the sun bear. Um, my favorite animal was probably the clouded leopard. So looking to build for those animals very, very soon. Um, I have a few in the works right now, but let me know what you think. Let me know, uh, let me know if you learned anything new specifically. Um, I do like to try to include the animal facts and things like that because I am such an animal person and I think it's important to, to know about them, to learn about them. So let me know if you knew anything new. Let me know if you have a fun Malayan tapir fact. I didn't do a whole lot of reading on them. So if you guys, if you guys have some fun facts or anything that I said you disagree with, you guys are phenomenal at letting me know. Um, when I, when I stumble over my words, when I make a mistake on phrasing, you guys have very politely corrected me in the comments and I'm super appreciative of that because I'm always looking to learn. I'm always looking to, you know, further my education as well as help you guys learn a little bit about the animals as well. So I do appreciate correcting whenever I mistakenly say something or um, uh, word something wrong and it's a little unclear. So thank you. But with that, if you guys do me a favor, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more because I'm super excited about the future things to come to the channel. And uh, until the next one, I'll see you. I'll see you then. Bye.